Couldn't hear me talking at all. not saying anything right now, but I'm not sure if I'm capturing it. Oh, you, how does it sound? Oh, okay. I'm not sure uh, what I'm picking up in the room and everything. I'm using my big microphone, but Great. See, I wasn't sure how uh, challenging it would be to set this up, but I guess it's pretty easy, so. I just don't have a webcam as a problem, so I can't really put myself up there or anything, but. I just wanted to try and see if I'm uh, like doing stuff like this, like reloading a computer or stuff like that. That's not super exciting to make the whole video. I can just kind of live stream it and people can uh, jump on and like watch if they want to. Because it might be more droll stuff like, hey, I might as well just stream as I'm fixing this computer up or something. And I get a webcam too maybe and just point it to the desk or something so I can actually um, show as I'm working on it or whatever. But I wanted to make sure that everything was like configured to begin with, because right now I had no idea what I was going to capture, but I can see a live capture um, of the computer and everything, because I mean, I push the space bar on my retro machine now, and, but I'm also not capturing the audio from it, so. Hi, Dan. I'm also enjoying a beverage, because I had to if I'm going to do this. But you guys can hear me clearly and everything. I'm not picking up like I have the baby monitors on and the cats are running around and whatnot. Hoping the microphone only picks up me. Cool. Uh, the microphone has two settings, I think. One is, like, directly front, and one is, like, uh, wide, which will pick up from every direction, so. That's good. Uncharted territory. It's also a third person watching, unless it counts myself, so if there's a third person in here, welcome, I guess. I probably should, huh? Should I go live or public with this? So right now I'm unlisted. I can actually make it listed and then people can actually see that I'm live. Are, are you backseat retroing me, Brian? The cat is actually literally sitting under a store disc. I'll just went public, so we'll see if we get any more people hopping on here, but 
we'll see. No, I, I was trying to get the, uh, the bloatware discs, unfortunately, the guy who gave them to me, um, it was for a different model, um, and unfortunately, I believe it was for the 800 series that's from Scandinavia. Uh, well, he had it for 7000 series, and that did work for his machine, but uh, when I tried it on mine, it basically said hardware mismatch, so all the bloatware stuff just basically failed. It just beeped at me 450 times, which is sad, because I wanted that junk, but I'm, maybe I can find it somewhere else, but I actually have the proper disc in now here. So I'm going to kick it off, but I forgot to save my Civ 2 game, though, so I lost all my progress. It took like two hours to get to, so. Got a few people hopping on here. Just trying some streaming for the first time. Um, still messing with my settings and everything. I'm just trying to reload the... Oh, welcome. <laughs> just trying to reload the uh, AST machine after I had a, another failed restore. So, there won't be anything exciting. Just a lot of progress stuff. Should I proceed? Yes, we're going to proceed. But yeah, I should probably get a camera set up too so I can actually point it at the uh, machine in question. Not that exciting to just look at the picture. Yep, I held her up, so that was Kaylee. She's really upset that it's getting close to feeding time and I haven't fed her yet. It's a travesty. Yeah, I really need a camera on the machine because right now that old hard drive is spinning around making all that good uh, old style noise and everything. Cool. Yeah, I wasn't sure how, how it would sound. I mean, it's my uh, good microphone, but I was afraid it'd pick up other stuff too. Yeah, it's funny, uh, the uh, reload makes it so much easier with this restore disk and everything. As you probably saw in the video, I mean, it's just pretty trivial just pop in all the disks and everything and fire off. Because um, the biggest thing when I do these old machines is finding all the drivers for them. That's just an endless hunt. Um, just of reloading and, and downloading and finding the wrong one and downloading, etc. But, yep, this just takes care of all of it, minus the Soundmaster driver. So I have a feeling this was not the, the restore disk that came with this machine, but I couldn't find any information about it online, so... Well, this is the life of a YouTube star, I guess. Oh, 
However, I don't think I gotta hook up the audio to this thing too. I get a big pop right now. Uh, I apologize. think that should make well whenever the audio comes online but obviously no sound right now but I figure it can be like a I can do streaming with uh, reloading these machines as I'm working on them um, and then also you know doing some DOS games stuff like that because sometimes it might be fun to just play a game but I might as well just you know try and stream it um, figure why not But it's certainly a trial run. I need to mess with the uh, video settings. YouTube is barking at me here for uh, not using the right resolution and bitrate and who knows what. But yeah, I, I do get it at the webcam. You had the C920 something like that, I think. I'm going to test your ability to respond on the phone here as quickly as possible. It's complaining about my bitrate. Uh-huh. Hello, George Z88. Just uh, testing some streaming, so <laughs> it won't be too much exciting right now. I'm just kind of reloading the AST I did the video on. Um... Just testing streaming for the first time. Let's see if it lets me change the bit rate on the fly here without complaining. Alright, if this drops, I apologize, otherwise I will restart it right away, so. Here we go, I went to a higher bit rate. That's kind of figured. I mean, a lot of my videos started out as the idea being that they kind of just, you know, here's a computer, sit back, just kind of watch it calmly. So that would probably be the idea with the streams, too. They're not going to be super exciting on that level. Hang out and check out retro computers. I have to restart to get the higher bit right, but <laughs> working on a mass pair. That's what you do at three at twenty in the morning, so I feel sad I can't uh, deliver the exciting uh, grinding noise the hard drive is making now when it's loading, so that's kind of part of the retro experience too, but oh well, you'll just have to imagine it. actually watched the video I wonder why I cut this out because yeah it takes a while just this I 
don't know, I'm starting to think of what to do with this machine next, because it's pretty uh, specced pretty close to what I had as a kid. Um, I do have a Voodoo 1 guard I can pop in it. I got a Soundblaster AW64 that can go in it. It's got Isis lot, of course. It'll make a great uh, card for DOS. Uh, I'm thinking about putting in a uh, faster S3 card or maybe a Matrox G200 or something for even faster VGA graphics, but I don't know. Other part of me want to keep it exactly like it is. And of course, the inevitable uh, fact is the hard drives. Uh, <laughs> Welcome, Brandon. Uh, it's uh, the inevitable fact that these hard drives will fail, of course. This is like a Seagate caviar drive, right? So they're pretty much guaranteed, it seems like, to fail. Uh, this machine actually came with three hard drives in it when I got it. Uh, one was completely dead. It wouldn't spin anything. So I got one well, not a spare. But, you know, time will take its toll. It will break at some point. So the question is, do you keep just throwing old hard drives in it? Or you go with the, uh, the compact flash route instead, as so many people do? And on one hand, that works, and it's great there's an alternative, but it doesn't feel quite the same, because right now I hear the hard drive grinding and everything, and that's such a great thing. Yeah, so you got rid of a Soundblaster AW32? That was a bad idea. Probably the most desirable DOS, or one of the most desirable DOS gaming cards now. Oh, you got the uh, ID to SD card? How's that working out? I've heard some mixed results on the uh, SD card versus the compact flash route. I know the compact flash cards are getting harder to find cheaply, so... Yes, Brandon, but is it beige? I don't think so. Goodness. That's a little faster than knowing this thing, that's for sure. Actually, if you look at the stream right now, I just have uh, the uh, 3D game hover. Uh, I didn't cover it on the uh, video, but uh, yeah. I'll check it out when one is done. Cool, we haven't noticed any problems with the SD card or anything. Just runs DOS, Windows, all that stuff. I guess there's no problem with reliability because the brakes you just put a new one in. <laughs> It's going to turn to end there. I should probably get the mouse for this computer before I get the windows. Brandon, you mean a modern Sound Blaster, or are you talking a retro machine? I know the Sound Blaster still made sound cards, but... I 
I heard the SD ones work. Of course, George here is saying they do work. So, um, but uh, or something I read about like the Combat Flash, the way it's written is more direct how for the IDE standard or something like that. Um, but at the same time, it's getting harder and harder to source those Compact Flash cards, and they're not that large. So yeah, sure, for these really old computers is one thing. I mean, this computer's got a 1 gig hard drive, but SD cards are so cheap for larger sizes, but... Hmm. That's cool. It runs fine. I may have to check it out. I have other machines as well with older hard drives that I'm sure will die, and this one will probably die as well. Um, not to mention the uh, ease of use, but then also just being able to back it up so easily by just taking the card out and just making an image of it. The only thing is, like, the same thing, um, so I have an Amiga 500 with the GoTech drive in it. Someone in the stream here actually helped me set that up and everything, but you lose out on that floppy sound. Like, right now, the machine, you can't hear it, unfortunately. This floppy drive is grinding away as it's doing the last parts here now. Like, you, you miss out on that, you know. You put a GoTech in, it's great, it's more reliable, it's more practical, it's easier to use, but that sound is missing. That's the big thing, too. Especially with the hard drives, these old ones are just sound like freaking belt grinders. And especially on the Amiga, because uh, the Amiga's load times are just ridiculous uh, on floppy. And uh, without that, it's just, you don't even know if anything's happening. So That's a good point, too. you got to use a good SD card. That probably makes a world difference, because there sure are a lot of uh, really cheap ones out there that aren't very good. Look at that, system transferred. I wish I would have saved uh, my restore stuff I had um, for my original computer, but that's probably long gone now. I do throw some stuff away, believe it or not. It does happen. You're my enabler, so that's not really a good thing for you to say, but... <laughs> I'm trying to pare down a little bit, mostly just trying to focus on like machines I do care about. But yeah, for a while there was just piling up the beige machines and I want to get them all, but. Yeah. The account always wanted to restore discs, but yeah, I had a the machine that I'm still looking for, and some of you know this too, but the Compact Rosario CDS 520 series was a all in one compact machine, was my first real computer. I had a, had a 286 before that, but that 486 was like my first computer, really. And that came with just this massive binder of restore CDs and recovery stuff and like manuals and how to use them and everything. And I wish I still had that, but yeah, that got thrown out at some point too. But that was like, yeah, everything. That, it, that's, that's true, Brandon. It's like when you fix the computer up, is it really that much fun after that then it's like it's almost the the hunt and then also getting it back to working order then you move on to the next project right I'm sure I'll have to tune this uh, stream more and everything but I'm also surprised how quickly it was to get to set up because I just figured like I should try and live stream and then fire up OBS and align the windows and there we go so 
yeah, I have yet to retrobite a computer, actually, believe it or not. But certainly not today with the freaking negative, what is it, negative one billion degrees outside. But most of the machines I have are pretty good. I have a couple that are really bad um, from the, uh, yeah. Maybe. It actually tells you towards the end when it's done, Brian. It literally will say a restore time took whatever. And you can see that fly by in the video when I did the first time. Um, but I think this one clocks in probably like 29-ish minutes or something like that. Or 25 plus at least for sure. It's just those little hard drives can only go so fast. But yeah, it's reading a lot from the floppy right now. It's fun too because I looked at the uh, the CD itself and it's five executables. So it's just called restore one, two, three, four, five, and it just expands that onto the RAM drive and then installs from there. I think so. It's pretty clever. It's called AST scripting engine. I think I don't think they wrote anything custom. It's just a batch file probably, but. I'm just afraid if I retrobite something, I'm, I would have to pick something I don't care about that much. Um, because I'm terrified if I retrobite something too much. I've, I saw the 8-bit um, um, guy or whatever. He got some marble effect on one of his computers and stuff like that. I'm just... <laughs> Supposedly, I have to understand, and Brandon, correct me if I'm wrong, but the best way right now seems to be that you put it in a like a big plastic bin with a lid on it in the sun, like completely submerged in a water peroxide solution. And that gives the best coverage versus like putting it in plastic and stuff like that. So, look at that, Windows 75. Yeah, and also, I think he's in Texas, so that probably gives you. I mean, the sun is probably very, very strong compared to here, so it might be uh, easy to leave it out to bake too long and make it just burn in, basically. So, oh, the cream, that's right. I just seem like. Um, I was watching Retro Man Cave as well. I think he was using the um, the submersion method as well, and it seems to be the, the easiest one. But unless the computer is really, really bad, I don't really necessarily want to do it either. I kind of like the charm of the little bit of the yellowing, but some of them that look like, you know, someone's been exhaling smoke for 20 years on them. I think that Brian's asking about if the term retrobrite was coined by the big guy. I think that that was like someone made a solution or a product quite a while back that they named that, but it's just a hydrogen peroxide solution that's pre-mixed for you, I think. If I recall right, that was what they did, and they sold that, but then you could basically just mix it at home with just hair products, you know, so it's basically the same thing. Yeah, the sun was pretty bad today. I'm driving home for sure. Which will just get warmer. See, Brian, this stream is not just entertaining, it's informative too. It might even be called edutainment at this point. Or me just talking out my rear. Yeah, all all uh, all schools are closed tomorrow, so we'll be home. I'm pleasantly surprised how, as I mentioned earlier, how easy it was to stream, so this is the first test run. Once I get everything configured and everything, I probably will stream like some DOS games, things like that, or um, whatever takes my fancy at the time, I guess. Not just reloads, but sometimes I might want to play through an old game or something. It's fun to, to stream it as well. Now, some of them I'll make into episodes but um, on actual videos, but we need to just stream some of the stuff too. I think I have to... Tweak this display capture a little bit. Let's see.
I just kind of figured I'd stay on um, YouTube since that's where I am today, but I don't think I have necessarily loyalty or anything, but I figured it was easier to set up since I'm just learning to use the platform, but there, I'm just tweaking the colors a little bit there, kind of washed out on the, we'll just go up on the contrast. I don't know if that's actually reflected immediately or not, but I noticed that when I was capturing the video for the um, um, for the original video, it uh, Windows 95 section was pretty washed out, so I fixed that later. But you know, it's an analog output; there's only so much I can do. So. YouTube still complaining about my uh, video output. I've increased it, but I'm sure I have to stop it and restart it to get a higher bitrate. Live and learn. This is actually captured through um, captured through the I mean, another video on that. The um, Manta. Um, VGA to HDMI adapter. The only reason I do that is the uh, capture device I have is capable of doing DOS capture, but it just kind of messes up more. So this makes it cleaner. But ideally, um, you capture from a DVI out, then you get a very clear digital picture. Uh, I'm going to do that as well. I have another machine uh, that I'm going to load up probably and use as a capture device for uh, DOS games and everything, because then you can DVI out and it gets a very clear picture, closer to emulation that people kind of expect. Yeah, I've heard it's pretty bad to use the the cream. I'm just really hesitant to use that um, stuff. But and also just you know burning your fingers, basic and all that stuff, it's chemicals. So I feel like unless it's something that's you know something that really bothers me, I'm probably not going to try it on any of my main machines. Pretty exciting. Since this is live, I actually do have to go uh, feed my cats. I'll be right back. Oh snap, I guess the machine's done. Look at that, 25 minutes, 46 seconds. So there's your uh, timer, Brian. So. Reboot time. And now comes the uh, plug and play detection process and all that good stuff, which is pretty long too, but I mean, just 
base OS load 25 minutes pretty good so get a webcam I'm like a little worried how I'm gonna figure out the lighting in here though to <laughs> make that practical but I guess I'll have to experiment It's just satisfying when they uh, start working and everything. Yeah, most of my machines that I set up, I end up like, okay, I'm going to load up all the 40 different games I have on them and, you know, relive my childhood and everything, and then I get the machine loaded and, uh, well, next project. This one... Um, We'll stay on Windows 95. I don't want to get 98 on this one since I have 98 on many other machines. 95 is what I had on this machine when I was a kid, too. So this one will stay uh, like this. And really, this one's meant more for DOS and then some Windows 95 gaming versus like with 98. I have another machine I'm probably going to make a video on, too. There's a K62300. That one I'll probably install Windows 98 on because that one's going to be Windows 98 DOS machine as well, probably. But because like that covers a little newer round. It's like I wouldn't sign it. Well, I mean, ninety five is almost obsolete in that. Well, obviously it's obsolete, but um, ninety eight really covers that and overlaps it. But it's just something so nostalgic with ninety five. I had that keyboard in the picture there, that natural keyboard, whatever. I bought it when it came out. I had that mouse. I mean, it's like. I do have my mouse installed. What are you talking about? There's a. It's going to come up here in a second. I'm not sure how uh, laggy the live stream is or not, but it's complaining. You do not have a mouse installed. Well, there's literally a mouse plugged in, so. Now, the worst part about doing this is trying to avoid uh, typing on my regular keyboard. Uh, and instead typing on the retro keyboard is really hard to remember to do. Oh, the mouse was not detected. All right, we'll do it the hard way. All right. Oh, look at that. Yeah, socket 7s are hard to find. The curious thing about this one, I'm pretty sure, maybe I'm wrong now, I can't remember. This is socket 5, so it's just a very narrow time frame or period, which is why the Intel Overdrive processor actually fits on this thing, uh, which I would love to upgrade, but those are just really hard to find in any kind of condition and they're very expensive when they do pop up it seems like at least the ones that I'm looking for but yeah, I have a couple of socket 7 no super socket which seems to be the best one really but just kind of take what you uh, what falls in your lap sometimes well, there's a, uh, a marketplace listing here in town and Brandon maybe you saw it too uh, some guy is selling uh, and it's a recycling store but they're selling four Gateway 2000s, ranging uh, from like P90 to P160, something like that. All like these beige, massive towers, but they want a hundred bucks a pop, and I'm like, that's just not worth it. I prefer to just find the scraps and use those. I'm not going to pay a hundred bucks for a machine like that, but I mean, one even, I'm almost tempted to get, however, it has a one of those dual floppy drives with the 525 and a 3.5 combined into one bay. Um... Those seem like they're really hard to find these days, so 
I'm almost tempted to get her for that, but just I just can't do a hundred bucks for something like that because it all. I already have machines that cover that range for sure, and I never had a Gateway as a kid. My cousin had one, um, a Gateway 2000. I remember the cow box or cow pattern box, uh, but I don't have the same nostalgic feelings, which is what I'm going for above all. So when I saw this machine pop up on the marketplace, I had to jump on it. Um, because, uh, I mean, that's basically the machine I had. Something that I didn't cover in the video, however, is that uh, the machine I had had just endless amounts of problems. I don't know if it was something with the drivers that came from the factory. Of course, you're limited how much you could find drivers back then. I didn't get internet until later. Uh, so I couldn't exactly download new drivers. Uh, I can go to some friend's house that had dial-up or something, but um, it would just do a corruption or freeze. I mean, multiple times a day. I even it got so far that I actually had a little uh, sheet on by the side of my by my computer, um, where I uh, kept track of how many times it frozen that day because it was getting pretty bad sometimes. So yeah, I don't have a mouse, so I'm gonna do this the hard way. There we go. Um, so it might have been a driver problem, or it might have been a video card problem, or something like that, some hardware problem with it, but it just, it gave me so much problems, but I have so many fond memories playing on it, so the games that I picked in the video are just a few that I used to play on it, but beyond that, I had quite a lot of them, that, uh, that was kind of my main time on PC gaming, was that mid-late 90s section. That's where I bought most of my big box games, too, so... Uh oh, restore discs. Nah, I too like to live dangerously. I will not install restore discs. Haha. -ha. Oh, that's right, there was, uh, how, there were 120 meg, like the super drive, I think they're called. I have a few floppies like that that I got from a Mac thing, um, from, uh, from like a, a pile of Mac stuff I got one time. Um, so I had the super drive floppies, but not the drive itself. So I think they were like 120 meg, maybe? And yeah, they, they supported the three and a half regular 1.44 as well, yeah. I remember them coming out, I was like, oh, well, this is obviously the next thing, but then of course... Omega just took over with their zip drives until CD-ROMs came around. I still have my original zip drive. The uh, see-through clear blue plastic USB one. I thought that one was so cool. I remember getting it and having no immediate need to use it and thought it was still just so cool. I actually took it to my school. I was in high school at the time and uh, they had, uh, of course, broadband there. So I would take it there. And they had a computer lab, and then you could stay after, and I would just download everything I could and cram on that thing, you know, all the patches for all the games. I was playing Total Annihilation at the time. I crammed that one full with all the downloads for that, things like that. So that was a, that was a good time. See, so what we wanted to do as well here now, um, next time we do a LAN party here, the people that are listening in here probably uh, know which one's will be part of that, but we'll have to capture that too, because that'll be a lot of fun. I'm going to play Duke Nukem again, 3D and multiplayer and x vs. TIE Fighter, that kind of stuff. It'll be fun to just either live stream it or uh, just capture it and make a video of it. Because that's such a huge part of uh, computing experience back in the 90s, uh, was that LAN party lugging the computer to someone else's house, the huge CRT and everything. It was a pain in the ass, but so much fun. Oh no, no sound. Yes, we will capture your horrible Unreal Tournament and everyone will laugh at you. That's the internet, right? That's what it's for. Alright, uh, it's my mouse. To there we go, I got a mouse. Alright, that makes it a little easier. So, same thing. Audio is missing. I don't know quite why. Um, that's right, we'll the control panel. It's funny to me, since I work with computers on a daily basis, jumping to a really old OS, I mean, a lot of the things are obviously the same still. The control panel is still here, but it's not quite the same, so you got to like remember where to find stuff. Yep, I want to search for it. And here's the thing. I sped up 1,500% in my video 
So enjoy the progress bar. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that, George, because the uh, Windows 95 was taken down pretty easily. And, and just remember, we're spoiled now because you can make so many changes about rebooting back then. It's just like, hey, I'm going to reboot. Well, I'm going to reboot. Or I'm just going to go not reboot. Like, you can't even touch it without rebooting. There's just so much stuff. It just um, has to be a restart to work. And progress bar. It's fun too. I was thinking about that this the uh, the other day. Like back when this computer was newer, when I had this equivalent machine, like how would you start up the computer for the day and just kind of tinker around with it? Even if you weren't playing games, I would like play with the auto recorder or go through the file structure or like type things in Word or in um, WordPad or um, I did have Encarta ninety five for example too. I would mess around with that forever, but just tinker around with the computer, see what you could find, and then, of course, delete a file you shouldn't have, and then you have a bad time, but, you know, it's fun experimenting. figure out a way to uh, do this slower, more convenient on my side, because the computer is sitting on the floor right now, being reloaded, but if I had it up on desk or something, I'd probably capture the uh, hard drive grinding, because it's, it's quite delightful. curious I have the same audio hookup now uh, I think I got it figured out so really curious to see if I capture the audio on the fly when it comes in I have it set correctly I think but all right let's see what I found look at that it's deja vu Say the work group, work group in all caps is pretty populated. Everyone knows that. I had intended to network these things eventually too, um, just to um, kind of get an easier setup. Not having direct connected internet. My plan was that I have the Windows 98 Overkill machine, which is pretty beefy, and then also recently sourced a potential retro server, right? Used that as a in between, so having an internal like retro uh, LAN that's accessible here, so all the machines can just be networked, copy files, things like that. Because I run around with USB drives and zip disks and CD-ROMs all the time to have one computer or server act as the master restore repository for all these drivers and whatnot, and be able to copy stuff. Especially when you start setting up games on the multiple retro machines, that's pretty uh, mind-numbing running around with CDs all the time. Uh, and yeah, I also store like. Uh, images, so like you mentioned, uh, George, yeah, being able to use ghost image machines did that for a while too. I remember I used to ghost uh, for work back in the day too. We had the one master floppy ran around and put in machines and fired off the ghost and a little easier these days. But anyway, then I'd segment having almost an internal network that's just for the retro and then have one hole punch through that for one machine to get into my regular network so I can copy stuff to that uh, machine which then the other internal machines can get to so that machine can be a little more modern but it has to connect to both networks that way these old machines like Windows 95 obviously not being patched anymore I feel like you'd just be dripping blood in the water for the sharks if you were to <laughs> go online with the machine uh, this age it's going to get affected pretty easily so All 
I'll see if I got the streaming or the capture set up correct here now if we get the uh, startup sound or not. Someone else heard something. Let's see if we can figure this out. Oh, yes, yeah, the default behavior opening a window for every folder. Fantastic. Uh, where's Canyon? too very loudly technical difficulties stand by okay now I can actually hear it too, but sorry about that. Oh, that machine's actually loaded now. That's pretty much all it takes. So that's the nice part about uh, doing that for this machine. It was just, that's all it took. So As hover. Look at that. 10 FPS frame rate, sometimes 15. Woo! I don't remember how to play this at all. Uh, I will have to get, I think. Yeah, I do have a Windows 95 Plus pack. I have to install that too. Or something. Because I remember I wanted uh, the Plus pack. I thought it was awesome. It came with a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Anyway, for the people that don't know, um, I had gotten a tip that, or I had got a restore, other restore CD that supposedly included all the bloatware that AST put on there, which I kind of missed. Um, however, it was for the wrong model, so when I tried to reload, it just basically failed. So that's why I had to reload this machine again. Um, but at least now it's working again. That's enough of that game. No, I'll lose my progress. So, let's maybe install something more fun. Uh, 
I know. Of course, now I don't have a camera, so you can't really see what I'm getting, but uh, the nice part again is that this thing will just go direct with DOS mode. to see if it's able to just switch to DOS and capture that just fine here. Also, it makes the CD run G for some reason. I don't know why, but I guess you can probably change that in config, but that's fine. Dark Forces. I play this so much. So we will um, install first. Can I do custom? Oh yeah, we're going all in. We got a one gig hard drive. Cutscenes, a madman. Yeah, Oak CD ROM I think is kind of a generic uh, CD ROM driver. It's used for a lot of different stuff. I don't think it's exclusive to this particular brand. I don't even know what CD-ROM drive it's in this thing, like the brand. So um, I think they use that for a lot of stuff. I'm glad they spelled out progress indicator. I wouldn't know what it was otherwise. I play this on my 486 33 megahertz first, um, and then when I actually got this Pentium machine, I was blown away by how much faster it was. It was quite a leap there from early 486 to, I mean, at least early Pentium, but just. I had a friend who at the same time as I got my 486 got um, a, well, I had a 486 33, and he had a 486 50 megahertz, so his was the go to computer. He had a Packard Bell. I can't remember what the model was, but we played uh, TIE Fighter on that one um, on a trackball. <laughs> he didn't have a joystick, so we used a trackball for playing TIE Fighter. So basically, we try and line up uh, the shots and you just spin it and spin it and spin it to try and turn your TIE Fighter uh, and then fire it. We played through the whole game on a trackball, so that was that was pretty ridiculous. So our progress bar is progressing. Uh, this game is, of course, a little older than this machine really was. It wasn't made for this, but uh, the requirements on it is like uh, DOS 5, 486, DX33, highly recommended. And I had a 486SX33, so I certainly ran it the first machine I had, but not nearly as well as this one did later. All right, see if we can get the Sound Blaster working then. Should be pretty easy. <laughs> Press N if you don't have a sound card. Uh, we'll do custom. Sound card is Sound Blaster 16. Port should be 220. We'll just do detect. There we go. Test music. Ah, yes. General MIDI. <laughs> Stereo sound. I don't think we need to go to advanced menu now. Sweet. Uh, all right. Um, so, yeah. Well, let's go with default and see. I'm sure it will be just horrible because you're so used to WSD these days and then all these games back in the day. It's just funny to remember 
most of these you know FPS games didn't have the um, kind of standard that we have today. They were all just will nilly. I remember playing Quake with like Z, D, and V or something weird like that. That's right. You can make a boot this right here to um, let you play the game. So, but we don't need that. We're already in DOS. So let's see if we have enough memory. Remember that? Conventional memory, extended memory, all that stuff. We're going to play Dark. Well, that's running. Hope it's not too loud, but yell at me if your ears are getting blown out. And it's funny, every Star Wars game back in the day tried to emulate the, the text crawl, and it was just so, so bad. I mean, I loved it as a kid, but you look at it now, it's like, oh, jeez, they, they should probably just not have bothered, but look at that smooth scrolling text. Yeah, they pretty much had to have it, I think, otherwise, why even bother? That's why when I played this game the first time, I played it all through. When I got to the Dark Trooper level, when you run into Dark Trooper without the armor on it, I was terrified. Goodness, I was just... screamed and threw every hand grenade I had at him, or the uh, thermal detonators. That's right, uh, thanks George for reminding me. I did mess with that one time too, and it was pretty nice just to have it all done. Especially, uh, I think he created that boot to DOS directly as well, which made things a lot easier. But, uh, yeah, the memory thing is a hassle, so anything to make it easier. And Phil already did all, all the groundwork, so you can just install that and then um, get all your memory options and everything. It was pretty nice. Because I fought with that endlessly as a kid. It's like, what, what do you mean? I have like 4 mega RAM, why can't I run this game? Ah, uh, yes. Kyle Katarn. Fantastic name. And credits. Okay, well. <laughs> uh, begin mission. Okay. Commander Katarn. Now, some games were really, really picky. I have uh, Simon the Sorcerer, uh, which is one of those like point-and-click adventure games um, from a British company. And the first one is just... Oh, my goodness. I had to fight the memory for so long to get that to... Uh, to get that to to work. Find the Death Star planes. Got it. The iconic first level. And it runs pretty uh, pretty darn smooth on this computer. Pretty funny how quickly the uh, controls are coming back to me now. Because, I mean, I played this game with a default configuration, no joystick or anything like that. Such a fantastic game. Uh, well, X is jump, because obviously. Now you can run this in DOSBox, I'm sure, great, but I don't know. Something with running on the actual hardware and capturing it directly just uh, appeals more to me. It's more fun this way. A 
that's right, you can like look up and down with the page up, page down key. Run. Stop, rebel scum. Oh. There's some secrets here somewhere. Oh, I think you have a flashlight or something too, but dang if I remember that. Let's have a look at the manual. <laughs> I think there's a quick start in here or something. Uh, just the keys. Yeah, it seems to run pretty well on this actually. So, said so I ran it on my. Let's see, feature control goggles. Do I have those? I do not. No goggles for me. Uh, oh, head wave. Oh, that's just a balance. Okay. Um, nope. Remember the auto map. Let's see. I can go here. Where am I going? Oh, I'm sure there's something in here. It's pretty exciting. I just remember in, uh, in Doom 2, you also get that little mini-map, and I used to uh, sometimes, like, actually play Doom 2 with the mini-map only because it's so much fun just running around with the little arrow. Because, like, maps have gotten so complex in these games these days that you can't really do that anymore. You have to have, like, a separate, like, map screen, and um, so you can pan around in 3D and all that. Like, playing the new Doom, um, the maps are so complex that you can't possibly do that kind of kind of thing, so, let's see. Oh, hi. Ah, the old school key cards. Find the right guy, kill him, take his card, and move along. I think that's in here. But that's one of the things that I like with this. I mean, besides the machine had a lot of problems with like with like freeze and whatnot. But uh, when I was a kid, it just kind of played all these games. Just compatibility was just phenomenal because of the uh, Sound Master 16 emulation. I don't remember any games that like didn't work on it. Uh, other problems aside, so it was nice to just have something that just just worked. So my console friends were always just you know, oh, we just pop the game and it works. Oh, well, what do they know? I think this opened up here, didn't it? I have to remember stuff. Aha! I knew there was something here. It's funny, even though this game is, at this point, the machine is way over spec on what they recommended. You still notice, like, slowdowns here and there, but I think there's a low resolution mode, too. I wonder if I can switch to it. Um, also, we can, uh, let's see, I think it's, It's a way to switch the uh, the size. It, it's pretty fun because I'm through the manual and there's like a big spread on how the joystick controls are, like typical 90s controllers, like a Gravis joystick and everything. I'll have to get a webcam so I can actually uh, show stuff like that. But still, the game runs really well, but like it's not like 100% smooth. I have a Pentium 200 as well, and that runs this game like it's nothing. Uh, of course, because it's way overpowered, but. There's the best of our plans. That was easy. Too easy. No Bothans died at all to get this information. Just Calcaton just walked right in and grabbed it. I 
Mission objective completed. Yeah, I just remember playing this game. It's like this is so amazing, and uh, that uh, you know you're in Star Wars, playing it in 3D. I think you have to yeah press escape to end mission like. Mission goal is complete. It's not like, you know, auto-quit or anything like that, but. You know, I think, uh, Brian, they made their own engine for this. I don't think it, it's not running on Doom code or anything, I think. I'm pretty sure they made their own engine. I thought this was so cool. Only my face is moving because we don't have enough CPU power to animate the whole scene. <laughs> yeah, I thought this was just just so amazing. And then, of course, they build this up, and then when you encounter the Dark Troopers, it's just terrifying. As I mentioned, yeah, the one you run in with, a, with an armor uh, on, it's just a skeleton that just freaked me out. And of course, they try and make it a scarier uh, moment, too, where they just, like, open the door, and then all of a sudden it's there, and it's basically this huge Terminator running after you, making horrible sounds. I'm just taking in all the Star Wars goodness. Katarn does not look like that at all in the future. I guess, you know, it was polygon based in the future games, so. I think the story interweaves a lot with the uh, original trilogy as well. well I'm sorry, yeah, four, five, and six, whatever you want to call those. Cal, and they're wearing body armor on that, but that jacket is a couple sizes too big for you. Just saying. All right. 
right, I'm probably gonna cancel out of this now. That's probably enough Dark Forces for now. Maybe exit here. Uh, Save each progress, you can just start each level, but uh, now I can just type win to get back into Windows. Because Windows 95 is win. So I remember. There we go. But this machine being so nice, you can just swap back and forth between uh, um, Windows 95 and, and DOS so easily. Like, you know, I haven't done any more configuration at all besides finding the sound card. Um, and then that's it. You know, we can upgrade it more and get some cooler stuff. But beyond that, it just, just works out of the box, which is what I thought was so awesome when I got it. Because even my 486, I was messing around with DOS boot disks and memory managers and all that. So. Um, but I think I'm going to call it here for the first stream test, which just ended up being a test for an hour and a half, basically, just loading this machine. So if you join to watch, thanks for sticking around. I'm going to try and stream some more stuff as I figure things out. There might be computer builds, uh, might be DOS gains, might be Windows 95 gains, might be newer stuff. Um, we'll see. But uh, it takes me a while to make the regular episodes. I figured I'd do a little streaming here and there, too, just to kind of break the, the void since this is easier to make. So... Thanks a lot for uh, stopping by, and uh, good night.